Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king. Behold, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests, and scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where Christ was to be born. And they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus is it written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are you not the least among the rulers of Judah? For out of you shall come a ruler who shall shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod when he had secretly called the wise men, determined from them what the time that star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the young child. And when you have found him, bring word back to me, that I may come and worship him also. The next verse goes on to say, When they heard the king, they departed. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over the child where he was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. When they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother. They fell down and worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented Gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The best gift you could ever give Jesus for his birthday is to give him your life. 
As we read this story, we read how it all began. On that special night, the stars in the heavens lit up. There was angelic activity. The shepherds had a visitation. You know, others had a visitation, even in that manger. I mean, I believe even the animals were amazed at what was happening on that day. A child was born. To us, a son was given. And as it is, when somebody is born, it's fitting for you to come and to celebrate that moment. And even as we do this day, we're celebrating the birth. Not necessarily the life, not necessarily the death or the resurrection. Those things should be celebrated. But today, yes. we have set aside time with our family to celebrate the fact that Jesus was born. As it is also fitting when somebody has a baby, it's fitting for you to have a baby shower. <laughs> Anybody ever been there? And as they did, these men and, and, and people from all around would come and they showered him with gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Just giving up their possessions. Just to honor. Obviously a baby can't use the gold, but you know, the family can use the gold for the baby. Or the frankincense. Just expressions of love. Yeah. From their heart. The Bible says that where a man's treasure is, there will his heart be also. The expression of their love is to say to, to this family, for the sake of this child being born, God bless you. We're excited about you. And here's this gift that we give to celebrate your birth. Well, you know, I think it's tremendous when we are able to give to the Lord. And when we give to the Lord, he receives it, praise God. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 8, speaking of the tithe and the offerings that we give to the church, he says in Hebrews 7 and 8, here mortal men receive tithes, men that die, receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Well, we are telling the world constantly that Jesus is alive. Not only that he came, he lived, but he died and was raised from the dead, that he's alive, and that when he ascended, he ascended to heaven and is right now alive, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, interceding for you and for me. So we're witnessing constantly that Jesus is alive. But notice, when we give our tithes, yeah, men collect it, but in heaven, he receives it. All over the world, people are being very charitable during this time. We are doing it as a, 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 a response to the greatest gift ever. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish. God gave the greatest gift. And really, the heart of it is that we give during this time. I always say that Christmas is probably the weirdest birthday celebration ever. <laughs> it's a time when people give gifts to one another. Almost as a gift, a gift exchange. But what's weird about it is very rarely do people give a gift to Jesus on his birthday. And, and there are many that do. There are many that set aside of their substance and give gifts to the Lord, to the church, and to the work of God throughout the world. Amen. And that's a blessing. And he receives that when he does. <laughs> you know, but it's so unique to go to somebody else's birthday party to celebrate them and to give gifts to one another. But even when we give of our own substance to the Lord, he receives that. But the greatest gift, the best gift ever that you or I could give is to give our lives. Yeah, he receives your money. But I can tell you more importantly, he wants your life. Amen. 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 I want to show you just very briefly today how to give him your life. How do you give your life to him? Number one, you lose your life for his sake. In Mark's gospel, chapter 8, verse 35, just a few minutes, I'll be with you today. The best thing that you can ever do is to give him your life. Mark, chapter 8, verse 35 says, for whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the Gospels will save it. Amen. 
The best way to give him your life is to lose your life and to give him your life. Amen? And when you do that, you'll actually find life. Amen? Let go essentially of what you want and do what he wants you to do. What does it mean to lose your life? It literally means to let go of what you want. He that tries to save his life is going to lose it. In other words, you're trying to do life your way. You're trying to get what you want in life. But if you lose your life, in other words, you let go of what you want, find out what he wants and do that, that is you losing your life for his sake. Amen. Amen. And you're giving your life to him. The second way that you give your life to the Lord, number two, is to find out what he wants for you. To find out what he wants for you. The book of Colossians very clearly tells us in, in, in a few verses here. Verse 1, 2, and 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 says, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. He says, set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ. Well, verse, verse 1 says, if, if you've been raised with Christ, if you are born again, then when he died, you died. And when he was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. With That's the exchange that, that takes place. But notice it says that when, when, when you were raised with him, your life then should be seeking to do those things or seeking things which are above and not your life shouldn't be about what's going on on this planet. You should be finding out, God, what do you want? I give you my life. Whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do. Wherever you want me to go, God, I'll go. I give you my life. When you do it that way, the Bible says that you're setting your affections on things that are above and not on things that are beneath. I don't know about you, but my life is hidden in Christ. Why? Because I have given him my life. You know, one song has said that in him we live, we move, and we have our being. If you really want to bless the Lord today, if you want to give Jesus the best gift ever, then give him your life. And you say, Pastor, well, how do we do that? Well, like I said, number one, you give him your life by losing your life for his sake. How do you do that? That's by letting go of what you want and doing what he wants. Number two, you give him your life by finding out what he wants. Set your sights on things that are above. Amen. God, is this what you want for my life? There's a divine purpose and destiny for every single one of you. And I believe that as you commit your life to him, you will fulfill God's purpose for your life. In its entirety. Amen. Then number three, how do you give them your life? You give them when you when you uh, that when you sin, repent. How do you give your life to Him? When you sin, repent. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because of what it says in Luke chapter fifteen and verse seven. In other words, He says here, I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Now, the, re the reality of it is that if we say that we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us. That's from the pulpit to the parking lot. The apostle John, when he was writing that letter to us, he included himself. So I'm not going to act like you're holier than thou. Come on, I'm, gonna act, I'm not going to act like you've never missed it or blown it or said something you shouldn't have said or did something you should not, should not have done. But what I am going to act like is that you're human. And that in this life, you're bound to make a mistake. Yeah. Amen. See something you shouldn't see. Go somewhere you shouldn't go. Yeah. The Bible says that if a just, uh, a, a just man falls seven times and gets back up again, yeah. the reality is it blesses the almighty God, Jesus, and all of heaven when you repent when you mess up. Yeah. But if you hide and try to cover it, act like it's okay, even with God, come on. Heaven doesn't smile over that. The Bible clearly says that there will be more joy in heaven when a person who's made a mistake goes back to the Lord yeah. and says, Lord, forgive me. Yeah. I've messed up. Yeah. It makes Jesus open up, up that package of a repentant prayer. He says, this is the best news ever. 
Hell smiles when you fail. Yeah. Heaven rejoices yeah. when you repent. Amen? Verse 10 of the same chapter says, it says this. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of angels, in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Amen. There's joy in the presence. Who is in the presence of angels? God. Jesus has his right hand. That means when a sinner repents, when we go and mess up, we go to him and say, Lord, forgive me, I'm not messed up. Jesus is like, oh, oh man, this is great. <laughs> How do you give him your life? You lose your life for his sake. You find out what he wants. And when you sin, you repent. Praise God. And then number four is you follow his example and make a difference. Best gift that you could ever give Jesus to celebrate his birthday is to give him your life. Yes. Forget about what you want. Find out what he wants. Dedicate your life to the purpose of God. And I believe you'll fulfill it. You won't miss it to the right hand or to the left. And by doing that, you'll actually be following his example. Anybody ever been to a Christmas party like a white elephant exchange or a black rhinoceros exchange? I made that last one. I don't even know where the white elephant comes from. It's kind of like weird. Like, okay, what does that have to do with gifts? Anyway, don't, don't, don't send me no email about where it originates from. But have you ever been to a Christmas party? With, and, and, and so the whole idea is you bring a gift of a certain value, and, and I'll bring an equal gift of that same value, and, and, and you, you know, we'll exchange. Really, really that's what Christmas has, has really become, the, the greatest exchange that ever has taken place. Again, so often people don't focus on giving a gift to the birthday person who's, who we're celebrating. We end up giving gifts to one another. But even in the gift exchange, there's something that, that, that'll bless you. He gave his life for you. How about follow his example and you give your life for him? Amen. That's some scripture. And when you follow his example, you will make a difference. Let's look at this before we close. In Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, Jesus is talk, talking to his disciples, ministering to them, and he says something very phenomenal. Verse, verse 28, he says, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. He said, I didn't come here to this planet for you to serve me. Life is not about me, Jesus said. My life is given so that you can have life. We saw it on Sunday. He said, I, I came. The reason why I came was so that you can experience better life. Yeah. Life shouldn't be about, about what you get, what you didn't get, what you have, what you don't have, and what you want, or what you don't want. Life should be about making a difference in somebody else's life. Amen. Amen. Being blessed to be a blessing. Amen. And the scriptures just echo this principle throughout. In John chapter 15, another place, Jesus said this about the love of God. He says, greater love has no man than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Yes. Yes. We, sing that, that, we sing that song, I am a friend of God. Yes. You know, he called me friend. That's what he literally did. He saw us in a bad situation. And love came down from heaven. Why? Because love will not leave you in a bad situation. He said, I didn't come for my own sake. I came to lay my life down. So I'm challenging you. If, if you want to give a great Christmas gift to Jesus, a, a great birthday gift, give him your life. Literally give him your life. How do you do that? Greater love than no man did this than to lay down his life for us. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 16, again, this principle is echoed. 
that when we lay our legs flat down, we're doing it to make a difference in somebody else's life. 1 John 3.16 says, by this we know love. My question to you is, do you really know love? By this we know love because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This is how you really know love. It's not by the size of the gift that that person gave you. It's not about what they said in the car. It's about what they do with their life. Amen. Love will never leave you in a bad situation. The way we know love, he gave us the example of love. What did he do? He laid it down. He gave it up so we could have it. This is the greatest gift exchange that could ever take place. He gave you his life. I challenge you, give him your life. What does that look like? We also ought to lay down our lives for the brother. If you're not doing anything in the church or for the church, then you're not doing anything for the brother. I challenge you, find ways to make a difference in your church community, wherever your church is. You might be visiting with us there online. Make a difference in the lives of others by serving the brothers and sisters in Christ. And by doing that, you'll be making a difference in somebody else's life. Amen? Amen. 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 And I'll leave you with one more verse of scripture. In John chapter 6 and verse 51, Jesus said, I am the living bread. Worship King John. I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. What a powerful, powerful statement. He says, I, I, I'm the living bread. I'm the bread of heaven. And I came down from above, not for my own selfish purpose, but I came to give my flesh, which is given so that everybody else can live. I lay it down so that they can pick theirs up. I challenge you today. Live your life for him by losing your life for his sake. There's no man that has lost, his, lost their life for his sake and for the gospel's sake. Find out what he wants for you. Set your affections on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth believe. When you make a mistake, don't run away from God. Run to him. And when you be giving him a great gift that all of heaven will rejoice. Jesus and God the Father rejoice because you did the right thing. You gave all of your life to him. Yeah. And last but not least, follow his example and make a difference. I pray that at the end of my life, and after I've lived 15 years, that I can look throughout my legacy of life and see that I've made a difference in somebody else's life. And that's really what life ought to be about. Yeah. And it's not about the abundance of the things that you can possess, but what you can call happen in the lives of others. I want you to stand up on your feet. Facebook family, as we're about to close, thank you for joining with us. We're about to sing a song called Bread of Heaven. You are the living word. Amen. We pray that God bless you and keep you. When you bow your heads with me.